what happens if I want to determine the solubility for the salt in 0.1 mole per dm cube of iron sulfate? Again, you notice when they mention iron sulfate, they never talk about the KSP for this iron sulfate, so we will assume that this is fully soluble. We don't need to go and memorize the solubility for all the salts in this world. So many of them, right? It's not reasonable. So if they give me KSP, it will be sparingly soluble. If they don't give me KSP and they are not suggesting that this is sparingly soluble, then we will have to take it that this is fully soluble. So it's quite easy based on the way the question is phrased. We can roughly guess, we can roughly deduce is it soluble or not? So the scenario is this. I have iron 2 hydroxide with 0.1 mole per dm cube of iron sulfate. There are two dissociations, so let us write down both of them. Dissociation involving iron hydroxide over here is exactly the same as the previous one, but I just changed the solubility to be Y because it is expected to be a different value. So solubility, if I let it be Y, Y is to Y is to 2Y according to the dissociation. All right? Iron sulfate will give me 1 iron 2 plus and 1 SO4 2 minus. Concentration is 0 0.1, so everything will be 0 0.1. And you notice I have a common ion. I have two sources of my iron 2 plus, and this means that I would expect the solubility to be suppressed based on the common ion effect. So later, when we calculate the value for solubility, the answer in B must be a smaller value than the answer in A. So we can actually use this concept to try to verify our answer. Now next, let us consider solving for solubility. If I want to solve for solubility for my iron hydroxide, of course I have to write down the KSP for iron hydroxide. So KSP will be iron 2 plus concentration and OH minus concentration squared. And I have to substitute all these values in based on this system. Now what is important, at the beginning some of us might have this misconception. Eh? Some of us might think that, oh this is the KSP for iron hydroxide, so therefore I should only be using the iron 2 plus that comes from iron hydroxide and I should be only using the OH minus that comes from iron hydroxide. Now actually this is not true. What the system has to do is the system has to consider all the iron 2 pluses that is swimming in solution. So all this concentration of ions in solution, remember it is for a saturated solution, it is for the system at equilibrium in aqueous medium. So if let's say in this solution here, I have two sources of iron 2 plus, the system cannot differentiate where does the iron 2 plus come from. You will not be able to tell, oh, this iron 2 plus, huh, if you come from hydroxide or if you come from sulfate, because these two guys, when they dissociate, is exactly the same, correct? So you have all this iron 2 plus that is swimming in solution. The system is not able to differentiate where the iron 2 plus comes from. So what it has to do is you have to count everybody, all the iron 2 pluses that is in solution that comes from both sources here has to be included. So Again, just a reinforcement, eh? don't have this idea thinking that this is the KSP for iron hydroxide, so I should be only using iron 2 plus that comes from iron hydroxide, and I should only be using OH minus that comes from iron hydroxide. In the case of a mixture, this is not true, I have to count everything. All the iron 2 pluses in the solution that comes from both sources has to be included. Total iron 2 plus concentration. All right? So I have two sources of iron 2 plus, 0.1 from sulfate, X from hydroxide, it is here. OH minus concentration only comes from hydroxide 2Y, which is here. You notice this is the quadratic equation, and we know that in syllabus we don't need to solve for quadratic equation, so instinctively we have to impose an approximation. Now this idea is actually uh, quite consistently done in equilibrium. Previously we did this uh, when we tried to deduce the formula to find H plus concentration involving a weak acid. When we encounter quadratic equation, we know that we don't need to solve quadratic equation, so we will impose an approximation to simplify the calculation. An approximation is part and parcel of equilibria. We use it very, very often. In ionic equilibria, we have plenty of examples, many, many instances where we have approximations. And now when we do solubility product, this is another approximation. And again, the idea is fairly simple. So the approximation is here. Let us take a look at this. We focus on the total ion 2 plus concentration. There are two sources of it. One that comes from fully soluble salt. This is a full arrow. One comes from sparingly soluble salt. This is a reversible sign. And because of this term, it makes this calculation a little bit more troublesome. So we assume that the contribution of your ion 2 plus from the sparingly soluble salt is not important. The y we don't want. 0 0.1 plus y is actually roughly equals to 0 0.1. We consider that the contribution of your ion 2 plus from the sparingly soluble salt is very, very small, and this is not important. 
Hopefully, we find this approximation familiar if you have done uh, ionic equilibria previously with me. So the idea is very simple. If you have two sources of the same ion, one is a full arrow, one is a reversible sign, we will drop the reversible sign. Usually, if I have two sources of the same thing, in ionic equilibria, what we like to do is we will consider which is less significant. We will assume the guy to be negligible, then there will only be one term. So it is easier for us to do calculation. We do an approximation to simplify the calculation. All right? And maybe another way to consider this, uh, consider this uh, is if I have a common ion, then we will just assume the common ion just comes from the fully soluble salt. The contribution of the common ion from the sparingly soluble salt is not important. We will drop that. Some schools will do the approximation earlier. Straight away, they'll write this as 0 0.1 plus y approximate equals to 0 0.1. Right? Drop the y. But what I'm doing here is I wait until we encounter a quadratic equation so that we can appreciate why is there a need for us to impose this approximation in the first place. Because if you don't do that, we will encounter a quadratic equation in syllabus we're not required to solve for quadratic equation. It doesn't, meter, it doesn't matter when you impose the approximation because the approximation that we, are, that we are imposing is exactly the same and the purpose is the same to avoid solving for quadratic equation. So it doesn't really matter when you impose the approximation. We can do it earlier or you can do it here like what I'm showing here. It doesn't really matter because the concept and the approach and the method is exactly the same. It's just that when do we impose the approximation. All right. So when I have this approximation, Sub back into your KSP expression, I'll have something which is a lot easier to work with. So therefore, I can calculate y. 4.44 times 10 to the power of minus 8. And again, just a verification, we know that in the presence of a common ion, solubility has to be suppressed. So we will expect solubility for your ion hydroxide in the presence of your ion sulfate to be a smaller value. And indeed, this is true. The value for y is a smaller value than the value for x. So this example is focusing on calculation question involving the common ion effect. So do take note of that. When we have a common ion, usually it's one fully soluble salt, one sparingly soluble salt. Then we will assume that all the common ion comes from the fully soluble salt. And from there, we work out the solubility. I think this is involving the approximation. Another idea that we have to keep in mind is when we consider your KSP term in a mixture, the, we have to take into consideration the concentrations of your ions from all sources. So don't have this idea thinking that if I'm using KSP for iron hydroxide for calculation, that I should be only using iron 2 plus concentration from iron hydroxide dissociation and OH minus concentration from iron hydroxide dissociation. Some of us might have that misconception. And then when we deal with mixtures, uh, involving this exercise, huh? then we will have some problem trying to handle that. All right? Now the explanation is just the common ion effect. Very simple. Remember common ion effect is just Le Chatelier's principle. So involving this, huh? when we have a common ion, ion2 plus that comes from a sulfate, increases the concentration for my product, ion2 plus concentration goes up. PoE will shift towards the left-hand side, less of the salt will dissolve. And so therefore, solubility is expected to go down. Actually, this is just purely based on Le Chatelier's principle. The common ion effect suppresses solubility.